Giving it to the secretary too, as well as uh, yes, yeah. exactly. No, our secretary yes is isn't here today, so um, okay. Matt will be doing the entire that you're taking and we'll take notes from that. Yes, you want that now. Or okay. All right. Um, it was a really quiet month. I only wrote like two checks. My favorite coming in, and. I have, have copies if anyone wants a copy of the report, and it will be online next week. It will be on that, uh, that page. But I, I'll give you the balances that'll kind of round it up. Not too much as as has going on. And our checking as of uh, the end of last of uh, last month, the end of July, we had sixty thousand eight hundred and eight dollars. Our savings were at fifty two thousand six hundred and eighty two. Our CD has 37,178, and our money market account has 102,984. So that gives us a, um, a nice sum. We've got about $254,000 right now in the bank. So as we, as we get ready for the trellis and all that stuff, we'll, we'll be um, in great shape for that. And that's about all, if anyone has any questions on them, like I said, I have some copies here, and as usual, they'll be online you know, in a day or two. And you'll be giving Robin's report to the Board of Culture Committee? Yeah, I will. I'm, I'm Fort Kegler, and the chair of the Infrastructure Committee. Robin is the chair of the Board Culture Committee. Uh, fortunately, she can't be here, so she gave me a little um, so the horticulture um, uh, committee, of course, uh, is uh, focused uh, around the, the rose garden and other horticultural elements in the park. And uh, the rose uh, garden um, center bed is continuing to be a bit of a disappointment this year, in Robin's words. Um, the bushes are much smaller this year than usual. There was some damage uh, to, because of the low temperatures in the winter. A lot of rain, they sort of came back, but everything has not just uh, come as, as the mold problem, which was there, has been stopped, but the, the bushes just don't have the vitamins. So, you know, we intercepted a disease situation, and, you know, at least the bushes are there. Yeah, they're just sort of not as vibrant as they could be as opposed to gone. The echinacea in the crescent um, on, the, on the side of the trellis is uh, doing extremely well. It's its first full year uh, being there, um, and it's, uh, if you pass it, it's really sort of looks like a wheat uh, field. So that's one of the things that the horticulture is going to be doing, uh, is trimming those grasses and cresting as soon as, uh, over the next couple of uh, sessions. And of course, the horticulture group meets uh, Wednesdays at 6 at the Rose Garden, as well as uh, Sunday mornings. Um, the wisteria um, is getting very bushy, and it's going to be trimmed over the next few weeks just to clean up the trunks. Um, there is a question that Robin's asked about what, uh, what will be the effect if we trim the wisteria on. You know, should we trim it, or if they're going to do some replacement of the trellis lighting, uh, are, are we going to be cutting it all down? So I, I suggest that we should just think about it being trimmed, because I don't know exactly when the replacement is. I'll get to that in the, uh, in the infrastructure report, which we learned. And uh, Robin, I want to say the new volunteers who've been, as well as, as well as all the volunteers who are always there, have been wonderful. And, um, and Rob is really excited on behalf of the whole horticulture group to have the new members in the garden. So, thank you. And as a member of the horticultural committee, any of our new members or old members that are here that are not part of the group, we welcome you. Any Wednesday or Sunday, it's nothing formal about it. We have gloves, we have clippers. You just need to come show up and clip. An opportunity garden to say it's rare. It is. It's fun. And the membership report, Beverly, our membership chairman, isn't here this evening, but she reports that there's been very little activity this month, and she'll have a full report in September. And the internet committee? 
Um, my name is Christina Sperry, and I'm the chair of the website Internet Communications Committee. Um, there, there's been a lot of activity uh, in the past month. I've sent out seven emails, which is a lot more than usual. Uh, five of those were for the summer movie series that we've been having on Sunday night. Uh, one email was about the Harbor Sunset Cruise that we had in mid-July. That also had a movie reminder in it. And the seventh email was our August uh, newsletter, monthly newsletter. Um, all seven of those emails went out to about the same number of people, um, about 764. Um, they were open at about all the same rate, except for our first movie uh, email, which was very popular with our audience. Um, that got open a lot, so hopefully everybody's been going out and enjoying the movies. And the only other thing I wanted to note was that this monthly newsletter got a lot more click-throughs than normal. The links that we had in there seemed very popular. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Um, but for whatever reason, um, a lot of the activities that we had were really popular and people wanted more information about them. I think some of it was maybe clicking through to our Facebook page, which has also been really active this summer with a lot of pictures. Um, Meredith Piscitale handles that. I don't think she's here tonight, but she's been doing a great job uh, updating that pretty much daily. There's new information about the park and updates on the events that we've held and that are upcoming. So I encourage everybody to visit the Facebook page and to like us if you haven't already. And Ford, it's your turn. Infrastructure committee. Uh, yeah, infrastructure and uh, media um, on press release uh, front. No real news. There was a press release on the movies and I think that was earlier, but that's uh, in your internet communications much better in terms of getting people to, uh, to to know that. So I we didn't really use press release that much. We're probably not going to do a press release until um, a major press release until um, we're getting into the October season. The uh, but in terms of the infrastructure, um, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, first, uh, I want to talk a little about IT infrastructure. Um, the, uh, the, the switch to Google is almost entirely completed. The mail is currently, from, from info.focp.org, is being dual delivered to both Homestead and Google. And as soon as everyone uh, switches over to Google, we can, we can sunset uh, that part of Homestead. We're still using them for web hosting. But we won't need them for email. I'm looking at Virginia because that disrupts her uh, <laughs> process, and I'll give you personal training if you. <laughs> it's real easy. It's easy. But we got to switch over with a minimum of pain. And, uh, I needed to well before. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find it. <laughs> um, uh, as far as other uh, infrastructure things go, I just want, I'm going to be very brief because the infrastructure committee itself is actually meeting on the 28th of this month at 6 p.m. at the Pilot House. Uh, uh, and we there's an agenda that's been distributed to the folks who have expressed an interest in infrastructure. But we're going to be talking about the, just the, the finalization of the draft the damage report just to make sure to keep the city honest about fixing things. I did note that almost all of the, the, the lousy trash barrels seem to be disappearing. There are only four left in the park. So at least they're listening to us, uh, to us on that. Um, Meaning they're being replaced. They're being replaced by, by something that's better than a, you know, another um, uh, oil barrel. Uh, so uh, that's good. Uh, but but the, uh, the main thing we're going to be talking about is the trellis uh, refresh. The trellis lighting is in its last year. If we could squeeze another year out of them, we'll be, we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be lucky. And there have been a couple of different technologies that we've been evaluating. And um, so we're going to just sort of try to figure out. Jay is uh, uh, coming to that meeting. Uh, he was our lighting guru for the last uh, uh, redo of the, the trellis lighting. So that should be fairly exciting for those of you who get excited about it. Um, well, we get excited about the trellis. So oh, the trellis? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks so much. And Virginia, the update on the sunset. Okay, we had another fabulous night. We, I, we get good weather every year. I do my little dance. And we always have great weather. It turned out very nice. We had 89 guests. So that's about it. You know, we like to talk for the 100, but, but um, it was just a really pleasant evening. Nice food, nice, yeah, you know, just very relaxing. And so uh, we took in, we spent $2,020, $2,220 about, we took in $3,000. $730, so that left us 15 11 
is that money, anything we make on that, it's not really a money maker, but any profits from that is dedicated to the Columbus Day event. So, you know, that's a good start for that. Not that we don't have the money to pay for it anyway, but that's just the way Joanne likes it. So, who knows, maybe next year it'll be even better. Next year, I'll have more time to fill the bags a little bit. Okay? <laughs> Do a better job on them. But I hope everyone who was there had a good time. The bags were great. Patricia, uh, do you have a report on your written voice? I do. Uh, I'm going to say uh, since the last meeting when they added design and I included the camp presented some of the stories to your about the parts. Um, and the comments from the membership who compiled a list of considerations, concerns, features that we liked and submitted it to our internal food way at the design firm. Um, they were waiting at that point for a site survey for due to the underground utilities and the water lines were through a certain depth and the tree was planted, so they were waiting for the site survey. They've now um, received the site survey as of the beginning of this month. Um, they, they, they do have it. They have it, they've reviewed it, um, they're taking our responses into consideration and they're looking at the site survey information and they're developing some sketches based on, on our language. Um, the next step for um, the design firm is to put together a schedule and then meet with the Urban Oasis Committee and Sherry Galvishan, who's the design um, coordinator for parts of the city of Boston. So, so I think we're moving along in the schedule. I just think this design firm has been fabulous and very responsive. Um, they've really moved the project along because we requested. So right. we made a good choice. Right. And they stayed in touch with us while they were waiting for the site. That's right. Survey. That's been the only one that's right. That's right. So we're on track. Yeah, great. And actually, in Columbus Day at our big celebration, hopefully we can pass by the round circle of dead uh, trees with <laughs> dead flowers. <laughs> as as, as Joanne likes to refer to this, <laughs> and to a shovel or something, sure. Um, speaking of, First, we'll do movies in the park. August 18th is The Great Gatsby, which is the 1974 version, which should be great. Is there anyone in the group that would like to meet and greet that night and introduce the movie? It's the Sunset. The 18th. Is it the 18th? Yes. He is somebody with a loud voice. Yes, somebody with a loud voice. <laughs> Because I'm so quiet. Is that what you no, no. Jimmy did a great job. I mean, and there was no mic. I mean, if you don't have a no, mic, I don't. Stop. There's no mic. Yeah. Well, he mic. had a mic for me. Yeah, they usually have a mic. We had a, uh, Luda, a substitute uh -huh. by himself, so we were a little late getting started. Well, at least the screen didn't collapse for you. Good. Well, that's it. He set it up by himself. And, you know, the people in the audience were like, last year, last week there were four people. What's going on? And I'm like, then go help him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a good number there. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I think it was a nice yeah. Wow, that would be nice. And it's going to be nice on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Well, they have competition over the Flying Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's true. true. So that's... But you'll get a good view of the screen. It's hard to see the angel, so grab it. You can see both. <laughs> they can have the wire, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will, upcoming events, is the Columbus Day event. And we met on the 8th, had our first committee meeting. It was great. We're moving along. If there are anyone again in the group tonight that didn't get a chance to sign up and want to come and help. We'd love to have you, and I have a sheet that I'll be happy to pass around. And we have our vendors in place and everything set, so it should be a great print for sunshine. Would you do your dance? I will. And then uh, another upcoming event, which is the highlight of our season, is our fundraising gala. Who's to speak for that tonight, Gary? Both of us. Okay. So we're having our. Um, not going, it's going to be a casino night, but it's going to have a different name, and we're looking for names. If anyone has a suggestion, so far it seems to be uh, Monte Carlo night. And so we're having our annual event on November 16th at the Fairmont, 
this year, Battery Wharf. And we have the entire downstairs. We have um, Grant Thayer from Casino Productions again, who will have a room with gaming tables. We'll have a separate poker room. And then this year, instead of an indus jockey, we're going to have a quintet and a quartet um, playing during the night. Patron has um, graciously agreed to donate um, a bar for the entire evening, gratis, and also to donate pastries from EXO. So that should be lovely. And um, uh, Glory Cadian is going to speak about the um, silent auction and the raffle. Uh, we're going to have uh, one of the side rooms is going to be a cafe with an espresso cart set up like a little French cafe. Um, and um, what else? We haven't uh, decided on the price yet. It kind of depends on what we get from Boom at the moment. Uh, but we do have uh, November 16th. It's a Saturday this year, not a Friday. And it's a week earlier, so it won't interfere with Thanksgiving. And we um, will be um, looking for volunteers next month once we're a little bit more organized. I'm actually co-chairing with Pam Gerard and Beverly Knight. <clears throat> so the three of us are working together. And they actually were just down in Falmouth at my home this weekend. So we did a little work while we were working at the Falmouth Road Race. So, and Lori has house there too. So, um, small world. Anyway, so. Oh, and we're also going to work with Chef Ari at Battery Wharf um, on the menu. And he's wonderful. So he's going to make some suggestions. So it will be past hors d'oeuvres, two or three different um, stations, and then our desserts and coffee. And, um, and as I said, Patron will provide signature drinks, which we're going to name uh, for the park. And then we're also looking into wine and beer, which may have to be a cash bar, but we're kind of working on maybe not. So we'll see. So we, I'm putting together an auction committee. Uh, I had a great group last year. I'm hoping they'll step up, up again this year. Um, I put a, a, a email out to Meredith. She did a great job trying to organize some of that last year. Um, we've got some things up our sleeve that will be exciting. I'm going to try to streamline some of the auction items so that we actually maximize our, uh, our, our monies coming in and don't disappoint people with things that really haven't been moved in the past or we're going to be a more particular this year. Um, but I think that it's going to be a great time and um, I guess we'll get some surprises on that. So we go. Great. Yeah. And um, we have Lori Lori here with us this evening. Thank you for coming. And she's going to make an introduction for us. Um, just so that you know, I have volunteers for 32 years. Um, and I decided that it was time that maybe somebody else should have some fun and enjoy it. And I should go play with my husband, who happens to be right behind me. <laughs> Preston. And, but it is not sold yet. It, it will not go through until October, certainly. It's important for me that the group meets, you know, our family, and so that's why we brought in um, the CFO from the Cronin Group, and I, I want you, I get emotional about this, it's terrible. Um, we handpicked the Cronin Group because it is our lead, and they are, you can do a deal on a napkin with them and they follow through. So, that being said, <laughs> This is Bobby Champa, and we'll talk to you about what you Thank you all for having us. Uh, Thank you for coming. We need to just make a, just a statement to to.
to be able to participate, uh, to be with, with the friends of Christopher Columbus Park. Uh, our intentions up front are really to keep everything status quo, not really changing anything. Uh, the staff will remain the same, um, the hours, uh, everything that's there now. The menu will, uh, will keep everything the same. We will consider down the road to maybe extending the, the hours or, you know, when we're open as far as how long in the year. Whether we go to November or December, we will expect that to see if it makes sense. Um, but other than that, we're, we're very excited and we plan on participating and being part of the whole uh, Friends of Christopher Columbus Park. Um, one thing that, that I had passed along, um, the management team, including my general manager for 32 years, who happens to be my niece also, is staying with the group. And I have told them how important this group is and contributing and being a part of it. And John Cronin was all about that. So, so that's a terrific thing. And what we're here for is to ask for a letter of support. Um, we do have, they have a liquor license here on next Wednesday. And if you get a letter of support from this group, that would be terrific. Yes, and I, I mean, what I can do is contact Joanne mm -hmm. and the board members and yes. It's not a good one. Can I ask a question about that? Um, before the, uh, is this, is this the hearing at, you know, with the life, liquor licensing board? Yes. It was, is there a hearing that you need to do beforehand with the neighborhood council? I believe it's the, I can't remember what jurisdiction is over there. Su Suzanne LaVoy's council? Yes, I've it? reached out to Suzanne. I talked to her last Friday. And um, and they were supposed to have a meeting on Tuesday, I believe. And she was trying to get a quorum together for that. I guess there was not enough on the agenda, so they weren't doing it. But I've reached out to her twice, and then I emailed her. And the two groups that I was told that we should go to is that group and your group, and that's and the aquarium, right. and certainly the Marriott um, Sunstone, who is the landlord. The, uh, the, the reason I was asking is because I'm sure some of the members, some of the members here, uh, are also members of the various uh, you know other groups like Nura, uh, Nura in the North End, which is not you are not in their territory, but they uh, they'll like have a whole discussion about the liquor licenses. It's just a nice forum so that all the neighbors can be apprised of what's happening in terms of the transfer. Because sometimes in a transfer of liquor license, you may want extended hours, you may want to add an entertainment license, uh, you know, which could be really great things, but just, you know, the neighborhood loves to, you know, have a little bit of a, you know, jawboning about that, and then everyone says great, and then, you know, usually everyone's on their way and we have uh, licenses granted and all that. So, so I just wanted to see if they, there was going to be such a meeting like that before your liquor license hearing, or is it just you're going in sort of cold turkey? There is not. It's just yeah. it, um, we were told just this group and um, the district board. And, and there will be no changes in the, the entertainment license. I mean, what is there now is what our intention is, which is exactly the same. And the hours are not going. When he talked about hours, oh, that's the time of the hour. year. Right. But we close October 15th. Um, and they, I know John is staying open, wants to stay open at least through Christmas for Christmas parties. So if anybody needs a place for a Christmas party. Um, well, for the trellis life. It's all right. Absolutely. But um, I'm saying absolutely. No, I mean. <laughs> 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 I'm sure the all for that. Good morning. Thanks for being again. What is the, those next lights in the city Next Wednesday. Regarding the groups, I do think that the Wharf District, the Christopher Columbus Park, and the Marriott are three adjoining groups. Which are there. I'm just hoping that the other two neighborhood groups don't pose a problem for you. Um, only because both groups include waterfront. So I'm just, you were sure that it was most important for just the contiguous groups. I've always gone through what, what the mayor office, mayor's office okay, tells us to do, and I've always gone with that. And, and 
I don't ever want to open a can that I don't, that I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> so, I agree with you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll double check. Well, and I'm glad you got that info from the mayor's office. Yeah. I, I just want to say a word in defense of our newer friends, though, because you sort of made them out to be evil. No, 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 they're, they're, and they're, they're, they're issue, they're, the big issue that they're dealing with is that the North End has the highest density of liquor licenses in all of Boston. And in fact, this new home rule petition has the, uh, there's the potential that that ceiling could be raised. We're at the 91 liquor licenses. It's, it doesn't, it's not, it's, TS is outside that jurisdiction. But I just want to, that's the reason that that group tends to be a bit more pit bull in these hearings is because everyone wants a liquor license. So that they can get the Suffolk and uh, you know Coast Guard crowd. Okay, I'll be in touch with Joanne and we'll get something out. Great, thank you. Okay, um, one more thing. We have a letter that Meredith received through I don't know if it was through Facebook or through through our website. Through your website, thank you. Very email. Yeah. And um, it's so positive. We would like to read it. And Matt, you're. You're very welcome to get the whole thing for the uh, minutes. This comes from a gentleman by the name of Joe Madden. He says, hello, in the past, my attempts to reach out to the powers that be have pretty much been about issues or problems concerning the park. Usually this meant dogs, the homeless, etc. However, this time, my family and I want to thank you for how great the park has been this summer. I'm sure it takes quite a bit of lobbying, work, and effort to help with the issues mentioned above. So we just wanted to let you know we appreciate all that you've done. The park is clean. People are respecting the leash laws. Well, what they have when he's been there. And it's been a place where we take our boys almost daily all summer long. Thanks again for your efforts. Best regards, Julia. Is that great? I'm sure Mary's <laughs> does on <laughs> And I do have one more thing. I've been with this. Um, I have a house full of company, and I'm not as organized as I generally am. But the board discussed and voted on and decided that uh, after many requests by parents that use the top lot often, that we would um, provide um, picnic tables for the top lot. So, Megan did a great job of finding uh, uh, large metal picnic tables. I can't give you the exact size. I had pictures of them, and they're at home at 145 Commercial Street. And I thought it would be rude to get up and leave the meeting. It's 48 or 48 to call my husband to come bring them over. So, uh, but in discussing the picnic tables, uh, Virginia and I and Megan were over measuring. We thought, gosh, there's room for two, and one isn't very much for four or five mothers sitting there and another mother comes in. So we decided maybe it would be a good idea to have two. We will have, um, they're bright blue, they're beautiful. And we will have um, something on the table that say, says that they've been provided by friends of Christopher Cole. Oh, and, uh, yes. No, finish what you were going to say. And um, so what I would like tonight, we need a vote of the membership for to spend more than $1,000. And the tables will be for two tables, and delivering the tables will be $1,400. So I would like to ask for a vote. Is there, may I have eyes? Do we have anybody opposed? Thank you very much. Yes. I just have one question. Yes. Did you say that the table was metal? Yes. yes. And the benches that are around the table are metal also? Mm -hmm. The only, only thing that I would bring up is, and this, and because I've seen it directly up in parcels 8 and 10, the heat of the sun down there on those tables, is, that, is a special kind of metal? That it's, not, it's open. It's like a mesh. And what about the seat, though? Because they're the same thing. They are open and mesh. Right. That's what they made. They were, they were a commercial picnic table, too. Yeah, yes. but maybe a commercial under some trees or something. Well, that's what they're going to have on each side. They're going to be on each 
kind of put one on each end under the trees. Oh, we measured out there was plenty of room because everyone shared such an issue. You know, yeah, they'll be, yeah, and they're not going to get as hot as like a thin or a solid metal. It's that it looks like they poke holes in it, stretch it, it's that kind of stuff. It's probably like just that they have in the pot now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing that's interesting though is right next to the top lot at Joe's. Sorry to mention competition. Um, they uh, they've swapped out all the tables for wooden. Uh, they used to have those kinds of seats, and they've got rid of them all and put wood in there. Uh, maybe they know something about like what happens in the sun. So that's an interesting point. Yeah. We can always say cushions if that's a problem. But I do know that those parcels, you can't sit on those. And when it goes, you feel the solid on them. They're solid, but it doesn't matter. Metal is metal. If you're sitting on something with shorts and little clothes with bare legs, it's still hot metal. We'll, we'll ask Megan to check them out. But I mean, we're not putting them out in this room. The first thing we looked at is where will we place them in the shade because no one's going to want to sit in the hot sun. Yes, we are. We, we asked for some sort of. Oh, did you get permission yet from the Parks Department? Yes. Oh, they're within the tot lot, and we've talked to them about it. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure that yeah. they have it. They're, they're happy with anything we do. Yeah. They'd like for us to expand the tot lot. Yes, Lori? We, we have that material that we can we never, and those are in the sun from okay. 2 o'clock on, and we never have a problem oh, with anybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. They're also at the Print Street playground, the Tarps playground, the mesh tables. Oh, and I go there with my grandson, and it's been hot in there. Thanks. Are, are, are they the kind of table that can be secured now? Or they they're really heavy, and, really heavy and, and the seats are, the yeah. benches are attached. Yeah. Yeah. Four yeah. yeah. oh, well, yeah. they were like six hundred and something pounds each. That's why they thought it would be better to buy two at once because of the, they have to be trucked in. So by buying two, we actually save a couple hundred dollars in shipping because they weigh. And I apologize. Maybe I should put them up on the bulletin board. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I will. And then you can pass by it. May I have some, will someone move to adopt the minutes? Well, first, were there any changes oh, thank you. <laughs> to the minutes? Did anybody have any corrections <laughs> to the minutes? Additions? Thank you. I have a So Thank you. Second? Second. Second. All approved, yes. The meeting is adjourned.